Hello, uh, this is Faltrifier. I am once again going to do a run. Uh, it's going to be with Dropus because that is the character that I haven't done a run with yet. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick play, I think. I'm not entirely happy with where my Dropus deck is at right now, and so uh, I'm going to do what I always do when I don't want to try to figure out why my deck isn't quite working, and that's play quick play. So, going to click um, on buying everything except for the Phoenix Feather. We don't need the Phoenix Feather. We're better than that. We did start with a Pirate Hook, which is incredibly good. Pirate Hook is, as you've seen it, if you watched any of my other runs or if you've used it yourself, Pirate Hook is incredibly good at just letting you chain one kill into mass murder. So... Dropus. Uh, Dropus is a blood mage. Her whole deal is that um, whenever she takes damage, she gets blood bursts. Um, so blood burst is a spell. It prior to the most recent update, um, the the update that added depth three, blood bursts only cost one mana and they did six damage. Now they cost two mana and they do ten damage. This means each blood burst hits harder, but uh, they're slightly less efficient overall. And also. They, uh, the, the big combo that used to be just ridiculous was there's a item that reduces the cost of all of your spells by one, which makes blood bursts free, uh, and then unfair things happened. So now at least they still cost one. It's still very, very powerful, but it's not completely, uh, it, it doesn't have the possibility of going infinite, uh, with minimal effort. So Drovis also has a lot more of a, a lot higher recovery cap than other characters. Uh, by default, it is 20 instead of 15. And then once you have the level four passive, it goes up to 30. And then every time she deals damage to herself, um, she does half that much damage to all enemies. And that is half rounded up. So if I lose uh, three health, they will all take two damage. And then also as we lose health, our uh, damage goes up and it is equal to half of the missing health ratio, which means that if we are at, say, 40% health, that means we are missing 60% of our health, which means that that is a 30% damage buff. Um, so let's go. So quick play means I don't choose my starting uh, deck. I don't choose my card pool. Uh, we just roll with whatever we get. So Burning Blade. So both of these are pretty good. The Mage's Ring is good because uh, I'm going to be even though I don't have any actual spell, or I only have one spell in my starting deck, I am going to be playing a bunch of Blood Bursts, and this is plus damage to those. This is good because it increases damage on four of my cards in my starting deck. I think I'm actually going to take the Burning Blade, just because uh, we do start with four strikes in the starting deck, and it is worth um, even ignoring the burn, and the burn itself is, is extra damage. But it's plus three damage on the Blood Strikes and plus two damage on the Slashes, because it applies to all of the heads. So, as usual, we're pathing through uh, as many elites as we can, which means we're going right. I'm aware that it's possible to do a strategy besides just pathing through all the elites, but uh, that's not how I roll. So one of the things that is a little bit awkward about the change to Drophus is it means that these um, focuses are a lot harder to hit because the bulk of the cards in your starting deck are... Um, I wasn't thinking. I could have played that treasure. Anyway, um, the bulk of the cards in your starting deck cost a, an even amount of mana, which makes it very tricky to um, actually hit exact zero sometimes. So another thing that changed is that Mend uh, went from 2 mana heal 6 to 4 mana heal 12 which means that it is now a lot better able to support Drophus uh, on its own without you needing to pick up a whole lot of additional um, cards to support, a whole lot of additional uh, healing to support it. Um, it means that her starting deck is actually fairly stable. Um, and the reason that it was changed is because the card that you've seen me play in other runs, Invigorate, that heals you for four at end of turn, was making Old Mend substantially less valuable. Because if I can pay zero mana and get four health, why would I pay two mana and get six, you know? So, I'm going to take Last Ring Strike, which is a card that I have mentioned several times and just keep only rolling when I roll other cards that I like better. But here it is actually the best option. 
Um, so the question here is, do we actually want to hobble the enemy? And I think the answer is no, because we're just going to kill the front enemy, and then well, I was hoping to draw. Um, this is actually more damage because of the burn. And now we only need 16 more damage. I think that's... And we heal back to the three that we took from thanks to the forge. So you can see what I mean. Like we're, we're able to keep up. All right. So frost strike. I think I'm going to take. Frost rune is very powerful in a lot of fights, and Dropus has a lot of multi hit. So we'll be able to use it. So I think we're just going to do 15 damage to the front enemy instead of dealing uh, six to bow. So we're going to slash into focus, into min. The min wasn't really necessary, but, you know, I could, so I did. All right, because if we kill this, then we get treasures. Um, we're not actually going to get anything out of uh, Frost Rune here, I think, but in later fights, it'll do more for us. But that's the idea, anyway. Um... Hmm. So the reason I did that is because um, this will mean that I'm at full health at the end of the fight. And, okay, so Ritual Blood is very good. What it's going to do for us, basically, is... So upgraded Blood Bursts only cost 1 mana, and they deal 12 damage. The reduced cost is the important thing here, because what it means is that this Ritual Blood, on its own, ignoring all other cards in the deck... Let's just pay three mana to lose three health, which is going to, because of our passive, deal two damage to all enemies. And also, it's going to do 12 damage to an enemy of our choice. And that's for three mana total, which is a pretty good deal. That's better than a, ma than a regular Magic Blast. And if we have any other uh, Blood Bursts in hand, it's going to reduce the cost on them and make them a little stronger, and that's very valuable. Um, Doubling Spyglass is incredibly powerful. We're taking it. Doubling Spyglass is one of those one of those trinkets where it's like, even if I'm not totally certain what I'm using it for yet, I'm gonna find some, I know I'll find something, so I'm fine with just speculating on it. Can we get, yes, we can kill the front enemy. So bop, bop, bop. All right, I was hoping to find mana uh, off of that treasure, that's why I played it. So we can, we only have one way to lose health in the hand anyway, so we'll go and do that. Um, the question is whether I bother mending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 11 is enough to be worth mending. I'm only one short of getting the full value. And then it's just a matter of getting this kill without taking any more damage. And so yeah, Drophus has a lot of damage up front, which makes her quite powerful. Um, so here we could take, so poison, tainted blood means that, um, once we have poisoned blood, then every time that we lose life, we apply poison one to all enemies, and then we get poison three of the first two enemies, uh, which is all fine, but it's not amazing. It, it can be tricky to leverage poison blood to actually get enough value to, I don't know, I'm greedy. Um, I don't like slow... I don't like damage that takes time to to apply. And then Malignant Nova is another one where it's like, this is fine, but it takes some time to spool out to get full value. Swift Strike, though, gives us evasion, which we don't have much in the way of defensive options, so that's good. It is a strike that hits multiple times, and it, so it gets it's going to do extra damage from our uh, item and apply burn from our, our weapon, so that's just all good. We're going to, we only get to apply to upgrade one one thing here, uh, because in quick play, when you beat a boss, you get twice as many upgrades and removals. But from elites, you only get one because uh, it, it was two uh, during testing, and that was uh, a bit absurd. We're going to upgrade the ritual of blood, which means that it is now the ritual itself is cheaper, and it's going to make us lose three health twice, which means it's going to give us two blood bursts. So we are 
actually going to be able to trip our focus here. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. The question is whether we want to apply weak or if we want to go for more damage. I think I'm just here for more damage. Uh, get us closer to this win. Because uh, I would rather into this fight before uh, before mean things can happen. So. I could have doubled that. But. Let me check how this number is going to work. Okay. So yes. I, I have lethal. So I'm going to double this mend to get to full health. And then get the kill. So. Draw toxin is a reason to pick up poison later. Um. Invenom's not that crazy, but it is okay. It is, um, Invenom means that all of our attacks will apply poison, which means every hit will, every hit we do will apply poison. Uh, we'll go ahead and take that. So we don't get any shield from cards. We don't want to lose recoverable health. Mighty though, we will absolutely love having Mighty to begin with. So our upgrades here, I think it's gonna be Frost Strike because this means that we get the Frost Rune for another turn. We get a second hit, which is valuable. And then uh, the other upgrade, so Swift Strike going to Swift Strike Plus gives us four hits, which is quite nice. Uh, that would give us just plus two mana if we wanted to get additional mana, which is uh, tempting. I'm probably going to end up removing the Blood Blast. I just am not a huge fan of it. Uh, the big reason is because of Drophus' passive that deals damage to all enemies, the Blood Blast loses a lot of value. So Slash to Slash Plus is actually a very good upgrade. It goes from uh, 6 base to 12 base, which uh, is very powerful, obviously. And then it would actually be here going from 8 to 15. So it would be getting plus 7 damage from this upgrade instead of just plus 6 because we get the extra plus 1 per hit. And the extra hit would go with, um, with our rune, or if we ever get in Venom. Um, but Min goes to 3 and heal 15. We're probably going to pick up this upgrade eventually. I don't know that it's the upgrade we want now. I think I'm just going to take Slash Plus and remove the Blood Blast. I might remove the, the Hobble at some point. I think I'm going to keep it for now. Uh, but Hobble doesn't help us kill things faster, which is the main thing we want to do. So one of the other things that you'll notice with Grofus is you only have 6 max health, which or max mana, not max health. Obviously, I have more than six max health. But so six max mana, which means you only start with three plus two from the, the beginning of turn. So Drophus has a lot less mana to work with than uh, other characters, which uh, can cause problems. Let's go ahead and apply weak because it's going to give us an extra card draw next turn. This will kill the front enemy and give us focus. Um, and this is lethal without needing to play the Ritual of Blood. Nothing we could draw here would change what we're up to. Okay, let's try the Toxic Splinters. We have the, um, because we have the Draw Toxin, I'm kind of tempted to try the Toxic Splinters. Um, it doesn't do damage now, but it does do damage at the end of turn. It is functionally 8 damage to all enemies. The Malignant Nova is also okay, but uh, I don't think we want to... 4 mana is just a lot for us right now, so I think Toxic Splinters is where we're at. I still don't think I want to remove anything. Um, okay, so... <laughs> the end of turn sturdy gained. This is pretty useless for us. The reason why is that um, sturdy is your max shield, and we aren't gaining any shield. So status reduction is good in some fights. It's also good if we end up picking up any cards that self-apply status. Um, Cryogenic Flask is a good get-out-of-jail-free card, so we'll take it for now. And we can also doubling Spyglass, the Cryogenic uh, Spyglass, to just completely shut, or the Cryogenic Flask. I think it's a Cryogenic Spyglass, which is absolutely not correct. Um, but yeah, so we can just completely shut down uh, problems, which is fun for us, less fun for the enemy. Just heal because we can. 
We're going to take some damage here. I am actually, I think, going to go ahead and cryogenic flask the, um, that partially because it was going to apply bleed, and I didn't super want to be bleeding, even though that would mean that it would spawn us more blood bursts. I don't think we would have been able to play all the blood bursts that would have spawned for us. And this gives us a couple turns to not have to worry about things. So now... Deciding where I want to put things. That can go. That can go. I really want to get. Oh, this is going to get this kill for us because. Boom. Okay. So. I may just. I, we'll take the emergency shield. Lit literally as an emergency shield is what it is doing for us here. Um, we may end up removing it later. We'll see. If it does not end up pulling it through. So this is kind of exactly the best case scenario for that in Venom. For that uh, whatever, because we now get plus three uh, in Venom. We are going to freeze that for a couple turns because it can do some annoying things if we don't. And then we are going to get super poisoned. Oh no, they did the, that was the Frail and Leech, which is actually good because Leech is only ever going to be three to us, um, which is obviously going to be easier for us to deal with. So let's do that. It's a little bit annoying that we have um, okay, that's actually makes that a lot less annoying. The question is just, what do we do? So, because we're frail, this would only heal us for six. So I kind of like just punching in for more damage. Uh, this, oh right, we had evade, which. Yeah, that's why the evade is good. Because then we don't take damage and, and it blocks lifesteal. Uh, so if I play this ritual of blood, it puts us at exactly I don't need to draw and see if we get... Okay, I was hoping to draw some healing, but it's fine. We definitely need more healing cards. This will work. Um, okay, this I like. So we take this, we get rid of the emergency shield, and this will generate us evasion every turn. And since we aren't really in the business of doing uh, shield anyways, it all works out. Okay, so upping the base damage of Vampiric Needle is pretty good. Um, it's additional healing and it makes things easier on us, but so is just giving us the more damage here. And then I think I will upgrade this Mend Plus because the mana saving and the extra healing is worth it. We probably will upgrade the Vampiric Needle at some point though. So the Emergency Shield can go. It's no longer doing anything for us really. The Hobble... I don't love Hobble. It can go. I may regret that later, but... So we're going to go up this right side path. Uh, the important enemies here are these uh, Frost Gorgons, which will give us potentially more Frost Rune. Uh, and then the Dragonfly will uh, exist, I guess. Okay, so these guys are still jerks. They still have a billion of aid. We get to hit a bunch of times, though, so that helps. Get painfully close to actually getting this kill immediately. I should have just pointed it at that. So, I would love to have some healing here. healing is on the bottom of our deck, which is not the best place for it to be. This takes us below our recovery threshold, but it means that we can get this kill.
No, we can only heal. Um, at this point, we may as well. I should have just doubled the heal, but. Okay, so we can do that. Doesn't quite get us the kill, but it does heal us more. And now. Okay, so the Jolt is pretty okay because it's a cheap way to do some damage. It applies shock to us, but it doesn't apply enough shock to really matter. Um, the Gathering Bolt, we don't have a good way to get this to doing eight outside of upgrading it. And if it's not going to be getting kills, it, if it's not going to be not getting kills, if it's not going to be getting uh, Arcane procs, it's a whole lot worse. I think we prefer the Jolt over the Magic Blast. So we are doing a little bit more damage than we would normally just because we are um, uh, at lower than full health and we are all playing and Dropus still has that passive that ups how much uh, damage we do when we're below max health. So doing pretty good on kills, but we do still need to find more healing. Um, Rallying Strike and Mystic Ritual are both pretty good. I don't think we have the mana to manage Mystic Strike, so we're going to take Rallying Strike. Alright, so we can make Vulnerable, which gets a little bit of extra heal. So the question is, do we want to freeze one of them for a couple turns? I think, yeah, I'm fine with freezing the back one for two turns. Just makes things easier on us. And then we got that evade stack from our armor, which is why we didn't take any damage there. Um, and then this is actually going to kill the front enemy for us because of the passive. And then we can do some damage. Hey, we finally found some healing. I would, I would appreciate it if our healing would stop hiding on the bottom of our deck. Um, Okay, um, Ice Shards. This gives us Frost Rune and hits three times, which is a good combination. Um, oh man. So this is, this is tempting. These, uh, this plus 30% spell damage, but I think I actually am only to trade in the Burning Blade for, for plus three Frost applied by spells. Because that means our Blood Bursts now apply Frost, and because we have Frost Rune, freezing things is now just very possible for us is the point. Um, am I interested in doubling up on this Ritual of Blood? I don't think so. We do have this awkward issue where um, I, I am going to freeze, I think, just once the back. Just because um, I don't want to take all the damage. And uh, we only get... We get the 1 of 8 each turn, which is good, but obviously is not going to solve... Um, that much. So we want to do the mins last because we want to get the uh, extra damage from being below max health. So we are going to do this because our goal is to freeze this guy. And to do that, we just need one more spell now. We actually get a kill because uh, we do extra damage for the targets. Yeah, that extra frost that we're getting is very good. Um, and then I think I just want to heal, actually. Since. Now we should be able to get this front uh, guy dead. We cannot because I can't do math. And now we're going to eat some pain. I imagine watching me play must be incredibly frustrating. Uh, <laughs> And I apologize for that. But I'm not going to learn how to play the game just because of a petty thing like it's very frustrating to watch me play badly. Let's do that. Uh, does the Ritual of Blood give me this kill here? It's pretty close. At least removes, by close, I mean it removes all the evasion attacks. 
so that we can get the kill this turn. Yeah, still would like like one more good healing card. All of these are pretty bad. I don't think I like any of them. Um, the big thing with Reclamation is since you don't get to pick... So in previous ones, you saw me playing the one that puts it back in your hand. Um, putting the top of your deck is much worse because uh, it means that you have to wait to get it unless you have card draw ready to roll, and we don't. So we're just going to take Firebolt, uh, which we don't love, but like I like it more than the other option. And so I'm fine with that, I guess, is the point. Uh, we are going to be, you'll be shocked by what happens next. So this is a bad time. And then we can do this, though, to get the freeze. So, and the advantage to doing it like this is we applied three frost, but this frost counter is not going to tick up. It's going to stay at 15 because this frost only goes up, the frost meter only goes up when it loses the last stack of frozen. You can't increase frozen by using um, impale or similar effects anymore. That used to do anything that would increase debuffs on an enemy would also increase frozen stacks. But you still can, with Cryogenic Flask, I think it's the only way to just straight up say that enemy is frozen now. But the net result of all this is that we get stack additional frost. And the boss frost scaling on depth 3 is pretty severe. So it's very likely that even, even with that, we won't be able to... Uh, Get it. Well, okay, I said that, but that should be enough, right? Right? Because that's like 34. Yeah, we got another freeze. The next one after this, though, that one's not happening, right? Surely not. But I don't think we're going to need that many more turns. Because this is 18 just from that. Yeah. So we should have a kill without having to let it actually get a turn. Oh man, if we weren't getting this kill outright, we would have gotten a freeze. Okay, um, we're no longer setting things on fire anyway, and I don't like that a ton. Uh, this is a guaranteed crit on frozen enemies, but this is just so much mana, I think. So we're taking the pounce, and we're probably immediately cutting it. The fact that it's uh, free if shocked is nice. But we're not shocking enemies. I think we're upgrading Swift Strike. I think getting two extra hits is worth. Well, if that was the thought process, I th Ice Shards Plus is more flexible and always will have the Frost Rune. Um, I think it's Ice Shards Plus gets upgraded here. And I think the Vampire can die. I think we do just need more healing because we just haven't found any. Uh, we're going to remove the Pounce. We're going to remove the Firebolt because those are our two weakest links. And we're going up toward the other elite fight. So if we get a frost strike, we didn't draw frost strike. Um, poison all these uh, jerks, and then just hit for fifteen. I think that's more valuable than getting that set up. Do I want to go ahead and freeze to prevent? Yeah, I think it's worthwhile. So the advantage here is that this prevents us from getting Arcane Blasted and, which is relevant because we get this uh, Evade stack that's now going to actually do something. But it's also relevant because it means that that enemy didn't get the chance to set up uh, the Arcane Rune, which means that it also won't be able to do uh, Freeze to us this turn either. Or won't be able to apply Arcane Blast this turn either. So. some damage but we 
We still have a stack of frost rune, so we don't need to set up more right now. And we do more damage by doing this. Oh, may as well get frost rune for next turn. We're going to evade this attack, which is the other thing where it's like, why it doesn't matter if we go after this immediately or not. Does this kill? No. So I think the reason I'm doing this is I want to get heal. The reason that I'm not actually going to do this is I want to get another turn so I can get a chance to heal. And we're evading this hit anyway, so uh, we're not taking any damage even if we didn't have this kill. We really need at least one more heal card. Can we afford Mystic Ritual? That's the question. I still just am not convinced we can, but we can, like, Mandalorian seems good, though. We're, we're absolutely not swapping out the Frost Grimoire. It's great. Uh, poison Vial, we are poisoning things a little bit. Not a ton. Um, we have to get five hits with Blood Charm for it to be Poison Vial, or just have it... I think I think it's still better. So we can get one hit on the front enemy. Yeah, this fight in particular is pretty bad for us because um, we just do not have good ways to chip through all of this evasion. Oh man, and they just, they, they're just out for blood, I guess. Um, wow, that's... That's just mean. And we are going to double this men. Yeah, and the other thing is like our evasion doesn't do much. So I said like we don't have ways to get through their evasion, but they can absolutely tear through ours. to assume that we'll find a way to deal like the one point of self damage that will be necessary to finish off this kill without committing resources to it. Yeah, because that's going to kill that jerk. Cannot draw a hand limit reached. Well, that's unfortunate. So that's going to deal with all of those stacks. We're going to get some powerful, which is going to let us heal a bunch off of that. And then we are going to... Uh, so we have to draw exactly the focus. There's one in four... There's a better than one in four chance. The ch odds are... Okay, there was a, a zero chance. We did not get what I wanted. Well, I got greedy and I got punished. <laughs> raise your hand if you're surprised. If you raise your hand, this must be your first video. Hey, we get to heal. Um, I probably should have just gone for the hit, but but yeah, they are really out for blood. Um, the Drakes have multiple things that they can do that aren't attacking, but uh, apparently today they are all about. I suppose. We are also out for blood. Um, it's kind of Drofus's thing, I guess, is being out for her own blood. And other people sometimes, but mostly her own. Oh, hey, it's our friends again. Uh, we are going to just lock down this jerk for a couple turns while we deal with his friends. If I'd been thinking, I would have... Um, if I'd done math, I would use the powerful stuff to guarantee that kill immediately. Heal. Uh, we don't have a way to get this. Actually, that gets one. So this is a little awkward because what's going to happen here is we're not going to have room in our hands for these treasures. But it means that we got that kill and we're then able to just lay in some damage. Um, which 
overall, I think is worth it. Let's see what, what strike we draw. Alright, I will take some evasion. Can we get this kill if we combine those, if we use this? We get it if we don't. We do need, we need this to get this kill here, I think. Nah. Why do I even bother? I should have at least checked if I had a chance of drawing a power card. I suppose the two of the remaining ones were... I, I would have done it anyway. I don't know why I'm pretending that I wouldn't have. Okay, so... Yeah, healing is still a problem, but at the same time... Uh, we're not doing awful as far as uh, finishing out fights goes. Because here we're actually going to be able to get this freeze again. And yeah, so we are we are down some health. Okay, we actually... This is technically a little bit of healing. Because that, that does apply leech. And leech is a little bit of healing. And we are just so hard up for healing that I'm willing to take it. I think we may actually get a blood strike. Because we have these slash pluses that are just kind of better. Uh, and we have, I think, enough self-damage that I'm fine with losing a blood strike. Is that true? Yeah, I think so. Especially because our healing hasn't come together. Uh, do I rest before the boss? I think yes, because this boss is going to summon those drakes, and the drakes have been eating our lunch. So, Frost Cloak looks like it would be good here, but it doesn't actually do anything for us, because all of our ways to apply Frost, even though we are freezing, uh, we, we are freezing things a lot, None of our ways to apply Frost are actually cards that apply Frost. On the other hand, if we take this, then if we later see any cards that apply Frost, uh, this becomes better. Because yeah, all these things say like, it does apply three Frost on the card, but that's from, uh, that's from this item. And that item does not actually work with this item, I think. Uh, we may as well find out. Okay, yeah, no, it doesn't, which I, is what I thought, but I wanted to confirm. So. The one upside here is that we can just do this. And that at least means that we're only dealing with... Why did I do that in that order? Why didn't I play a focus? Um... Is that at least we're not dealing with the boss for a couple turns. Basically free. And then apply more frost there. Which the other advantage there is because it took us a couple turns, we built we're able to build up some evasion from our um, uh, from our uh, armor. We get evasion every turn, and if we don't use it, then it just will stick around until we need it. Let's do that. And that. Because I guess we're just kind of all in on this applying poison thing. So let's get another stack of evasion. So that's going to get us a kill. So we're actually in pretty good shape. So we're going to take damage from burn, but then um, this thing is going to just, we're just going to evade all the attacks. That one's just going to totally die. So the other card that's not doing much for us here is this predict because um, we just don't have any other growth to go with it. So this is a case where like having that plus is very good. We just immediately chew through all of that evade. Uh, and that lets us just laugh, which, you know, it's good to laugh. Let's kill this jerk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm counting because I'm about to play Blood Burst. I should have done this earlier, but...
Do we have lethal here? We have close to lethal. Yes, we have lethal. Okay. So. I don't actually love any. So Mana Surge looks very good, but the downside is because it draws your mana, if you can't pair it with non-mana draw, you have now basically stolen from, from next turn to pay for this turn. Benevolent Idol is healing. It's just not much healing, and we don't have any way to actually discard it. I guess Consuming Ray is damage. The, the triggers burn four times. I think whichever one of these we take, we're probably just removing. Um... Uh, Mana Surge is the only one that I'm not going, that I wouldn't immediately remove, so I think that's the one I'm taking. I say after I've already taken it. Um, oh, that goes up to five cost for this upgrade. That's that's bad. I don't like that. Uh, sure, it gives curse two, but I don't think that justifies that. So, Rallying Strike plus draws two strikes. That's good. Um. I really wish this gave two mana base instead of just getting the plus one mana boost. So this gives plus three mana here, which sounds very good, but it also then makes us lose five health. And I don't know that we can afford to take that much extra health damage. Uh, so it's still, this is still the upgrade if we're going to go for mana, because this is just like focus goes from four to six. So that's still just plus two, but draw toxin goes from three to five, which is plus two. And it always will give it to us. The other option again is the Swift Strike, but we are now out of the land of evasion. Uh, you know, this would have been very good against those Drakes to have those four strikes, but we're no longer fighting Drakes, so. So the question is, do we cut the Malignant Nova? And I, again, I want to, but I just don't have the healing to justify it. I, I, I don't have enough other healing. Uh, the Jolt is also uh, a possible cut. The big reason to keep it is just it, it's not bad. It is one mana to do some damage and apply some frost. And I think for that reason it gets to stay. I'm just... I just don't love it. The predict... Um, I think I cut the predict because it is my lowest value mana card by quite a margin. And it is... Like if I play mana surge, predict is not what I want to see. Okay, so... Our elite path is going right side. We definitely want to fight the Bayolator, the Hatchling. Okay, so Bayolator is our, is our boss, which it could be a problem. Because, um, well, okay, no, because actually we have a bit of evasion, and evasion is pretty good against Bayolator. Uh, because Bayolator hits very hard, but a relatively small number of times, like still multiple times. But the other thing is like the fact that we could pull out this nonsense where we just freeze for two turns right off the bat is... Uh, quite possibly going to just save us outright. So we just go ahead and get the mana. Let's go ahead and do this. And the reason why is because I expect to get a treasure. And so, yeah, we're going to get extra value to justify that. So we can play this to heal. We're only down seven health. I like getting vulnerable out, so I should have played that before I played the the evasion thing. But then we're gonna evade both of these hits. So. so do this and then that. Uh, this would only heal us for seven, and we can do better than that. I think we are probably freezing this guy. Let's see what we draw off of this. Okay, we just do that. I don't even have to spend a card. Hooray for stacking various debuffs for value. and another evade and just for good measure let's just completely lock that jerk down 
slowly healing off that LH. Yeah, I'm still not sold on Malignant Nova overall. Uh, it's doing a little more than I thought it would. I think. I don't know. Toxic Splinters is definitely doing more than I thought it would. Uh, it, it helps that we just don't have any shield anyway, so so we can just completely ignore the downside. But I think with Dropus, uh, that's fairly that's a fairly common thing you'll be able to do. So. Okay, well, we still have this kill because of um, all the status effects. Okay, so turn to gunk is interesting. So the big thing that turn to gunk does in Drophus specifically is we can transform um, blood bursts to make them, and the sludge shots are cheaper than the blood bursts, and they deal. It's basically like a one, like using. So this is healing, and it lets us functionally. So I guess it's in some ways like an inverse. Um, it, it's a, it's an alternate universe ritual of blood. So instead of losing six health and getting blood bursts, uh, this is we heal six health and we just transform one existing blood burst. Uh, okay, so the Abyss Scepter, oh man, the choices. Do we think we have enough freezing? Because these are the two items, like both of these, the Abyss Scepter and the uh, Frost Grimoire are like the, the absolute top tier Drophus weapons. And they are both amazing. Uh, the Arcane Cloak doesn't do anything. It's, it's like the Frost Cloak. It doesn't do anything for us here because we don't have any way to apply it. Um, so, God, it's a tough choice. I don't want to risk it. I, I like the Frost Grimoire more too much, I think. All right, yeah, we're going to keep working our way up towards this bay later. Taking time to rest doesn't seem like it does anything for us. Let's see what else we get. Uh, starting Purity. I think it's more useful because I just am bad at remembering to use the the game power for this turn, <laughs> and the purity is valuable against a lot of the fights in this this area because we don't have great ways to deal with being cursed. And we're gonna start with that so that we can start. We really want to get this. Um, Lay in damage instead of trying to freeze the back line because we really want to kill this bay later before, uh, before it can ruin our day. So we can transform that. Boop. Yeah, let's go ahead and triple. Shrivels are, are, are interesting for Drophus because of the. Uh, because Drophus gets the blood bursts off of them. So we need to hit you at least once. So we'll put the curse on this one. I'll actually freeze there. Kill regardless of what we play. And I'm just gonna lock up this freeze. That's strike would have done more damage. There's no reason we play Blood Burst over the strike there. Just wasn't thinking. But what else is new? Am I right? Um, we didn't even have to do that. I just wanted to. Um, okay, yeah, Ravenous Intent. It's healing, it's draw. It's everything we love. Um, and it's Vengeance. It's extra it's plus damage as well. This is an awkward opening hand. This is all of our mana cards. Uh, just, But the nice thing is Blood Burst is still damage. Okay, we, we didn't do enough damage apparently to trip the, um, the treasure threshold. I'm just going to go ahead and ice that one out. Um, just one less thing to worry about. We would have been fine because Beerus actually beaten the debuffs, but I just like not having to even think about it. Let's see what we draw. 
of course we can't draw mana because we just we, all of our mana is over here we, we drew all of it on on turn one literally all but one so that mana sort is actually going to shuffle have to shuffle the deck because yeah okay um fortunately everything is frozen um i like poisoning everything then we can do that and that Kill, does this get us? No, because that's 18, which is not enough. So it's taking uh, 12 at end of turn. So we'll actually only need, so this actually is a kill, just not until the next end of turn. Um. Oh, so now that's because of the upgrade. Um. I think I actually want to let it live for now because I want to be able to get um, the treasure off it when I'm going to be able to have a chance to play the treasure. Also, that's just a much better way to kill it. Poison, and that is lethal, and we are full health. Yeah, this deck has uh, worked its way around to just all fitting together. Um, I don't like any of these cards, though. Yes, this applies poison. Um, yes, it applies curse. Uh, but it is six mana, and we do not have that much mana to spare. This one does give us mana boost, too, but it, applies, it gives us shield and, like, four mana for mana. So it basically just pays for itself slowly and gives us shield, which I don't think is where we want to be. Uh, so the question is, do we want to re-roll and burn a re-roll here? Um, I don't think so. I think we'd rather save my re-roll. Um, I think extra evade chance is solid. I think, yeah, I think I think this is what we take. Because I want to save the re-roll here because I really want to get um, Corrupted Font out of this fight. And so getting additional chances at it is good. So this fight would be going a whole would go a whole lot worse if we couldn't have those purity stacks, because those initial purity stacks mean that we aren't going to to start this fight with um, a million stacks of uh, curse. We are still going to get cursed, but we aren't going to start with all of that curse. And we can freeze that. Something happened there. Freeze that so that we don't. So yeah, we are still still not cursed. Which is good for us. And then I think I want to get yeah, this frost strike. Uh, this doesn't actually do much for me because I can't play them, but it does do four damage to them. Which I'm willing to pay a little bit of mana to deal 4 damage to all enemies. Pay, pay a little bit of health to do that much damage to all enemies. Yeah. Do that. I'm debating if I want to transform this mana surge. Uh, because like I've said, the mana surge is, is a bit of a risk. So transforming it makes sense. But if I draw... Yeah, okay, that was the reason I didn't was because if I drew this, then I'm fine with transforming that. Yeah, so, so Drovus has so little mana that it is actually very possible for us to end the turn above max mana. And then we lose mana at the start of the next turn, which happens with basically no other character. But Drovus has so little mana that, that you can still end up doing that. Should we draw? I was hoping I was going to kill. I'm going to go and kill with that because, uh, yeah. We, we knew we were going to get treasures. Apply vulnerable. 
Get that up. And I'm not bothering to apply weak because we have all these evade stacks, so. And so we're finally cursed, but we only have one curse stack, which is very manageable. The one curse stack is actually kind of nice because it means that we just get all these free um, these free blood bursts every turn. Let's go and do that. Let's just get the healing. We're going to evade both these hits because we are still slowly stacking evade. Oh, well, I kind of thought we had lethal here, but it doesn't matter. We've got lethal off of the one curse stack. Blinked at Dova coming in clutch. Okay, so Ruinous Gamble, I think, is, is too dangerous. I don't think we can take Ruinous Gamble. Right? There's no way. There's no way. Hello, yes. Uh, welcome to uh, Jackass, I guess. Okay, we definitely need more card draw if that's the nonsense I'm up to. The mana surge needs to go. Um, the jolt needs to go. Cutting cards is now way more important. Oh, the hobble needs to go. But cutting cards is way more important if we've got the doom. Um, because, oh boy, it is very important that we do not get stuck holding the bag. So one thing we can do though so we don't actually draw a bunch of extra cards by doing that. We do now have Port Doom, which means we have a much, much uh, higher... I said I was saving that reroll so I could get Corrupted Font, and then I saw the non-Corrupted Font card, and I was just like, no, we're going to do it. Um, this is why I should not be trusted to play video games. Because I compulsively make the worst possible decisions uh, because I have a terrible sense of humor, and I think it's funny. So we're going to create a whole bunch of blood bursts. We're going to turn one of them into a slide shot. We're going to freeze that one. I'd say this has been a pretty good turn one so far. Sure, we haven't done anything, but yeah, let's just keep buying in damage. All right, and then a bunch of statuses are going to go off. And playing the shrivel is going to kill the front guy. We are out of mana, unfortunately. I... I need mana. That'll do. This is enough curse to be a problem. Um, right. 
right on time. We're going to transform this. So the thing that I haven't been paying attention to is we were about to run out of, of uh, Doom. But now we're not. Now we have more time. That's exactly... Everything is exactly like I planned. The reason I didn't mention the Doom is because I knew that was going to happen. Uh, I am a genius who is the best at planning. Um, how do I get the most damage here? That at least freezes. It's not the most damage, probably, but it means that we're only taking damage from the um, from the curse. So we do really want to get this kill this turn, but the only way we could have done done that is if we had drawn mana and we didn't. So uh, we're just gonna take a bunch of curse damage. This is rough. Okay, we really need to get mana here. Is there any mana in the deck? Ugh. So, the odds of drawing mana are very high. Okay, good. Yeah, if that hadn't been mana, though, I would have been very sad. But I wasn't sure I had the kill without, without mana. Yeah, I didn't. I needed. So, so that could have gone better. But it could have gone a lot worse. Okay, this is interesting. Um, I'm guessing that's because we saw it from the event. And that's why we were able to see it twice. Because normally you, you can't get the same thing twice. Uh, I think I am going to take the Enchanted Hammer. The reason why is because it's good. And because the Pirate Treasure, the Pirate Rock as we've covered, is, is useless against the actual final boss. I mean, it would be good here, but it wouldn't be the most amazing thing. Let's do that. We'll uh, take off a stack of purity because we can't freeze this until um, after all of its purity stacks are gone. Hmm. Debating what I want to do here. I'm going to do that and then I do still do this uh, just to get that damage out to everyone. So that's going to be a frail, which we don't really care about, but we do care that it means that um, we don't have to worry about um, that it. We don't have to worry about it being um, pure anymore. It is no longer pure. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and freeze. I'm deciding what I want to do. Uh, I think I do that, and then I think I'm actually going to upgrade this. And then start poking at my friend over there at the back. So fortunately, the thing that we have that applies extra frost does not apply to this. Uh, we can't, uh, this, the, the, we won't freeze ourselves harder because of that. Um, so we need to freeze this guy because otherwise, and we can't afford to play that because if we do, we will get frozen and we do not want to be frozen. But now we're fine playing that this is the last card of the turn because that will freeze us. Um, but if the freeze is the last thing that happens, then it's not a big problem because we'll unfreeze at the start of turn. Okay, and then if we do this, that freezes it. So that's fine. Oh, we didn't freeze because we have purity stacks. I am very smart and very clever. We, 
this fight is just... I, I do think this is the toughest of the elite fights, this combination. Because three martial elementals is already... Uh, like it, You've seen some of my other runs uh, where I'm able to just body them. But if you can't just destroy them immediately, uh, the combination of all the things they do uh, can be a real problem. So we are going to eat another arcane... St oh, no, because we can evade statuses because we have that item. Uh, which is why we didn't pick that there. And because we didn't get attacked, we still had the evasion. I had this. I should have played that. I wasn't thinking. Alright, so now we have two evade stacks. So we'll get to evade both these hits. Um, so... I think I may just... So the problem is I can't actually hit this front unit because... Um, because the taunt stack on the Shadowbone... So that's why I didn't just kill this guy's because I couldn't. This uh, Shadowbone Protector was taunting, uh, which meant that I couldn't choose what I wanted to hit. So we're not... Oh, we're gonna, just going to evade that status, of course, because... Which is kind of annoying. I, I would have rather um, had... The evasion stack, I think, in this case. I'm not actually playing this this turn. I'm playing the Malignant Nova, I think. But um, I wanted to go ahead and get the Sled Shot transformed because that's the thing I'd rather have. And the main reason I'm playing this is actually just because I want to get a little bit of extra damage on that guy. Um, can't quite get this kill, unfortunately. We are going to be able to evade both hits, though. Um, these stupid taunt sacks. Um, so, on the one hand, I haven't been able to fit in this Ruinous Gamble, really. But on the other hand, um, it hasn't ended up mattering a ton. So the upside here is that we get an evade stack every turn, and this jerk is only... So this hasn't ended up being as bad as I was worried it was going to be, largely just because um, the evade item, the fact that we have this ability to evade statuses has been just amazing for us. Um, so one of our problems here is... this arcane barrier. But I think I'm still willing to do this because that gets us a freeze, which I like. And actually taking damage there is... is the, and the fact that taking damage there let us set up um, whatever is pretty nice. Let's get a blood burst. Uh, yeah, we'll just do three. Uh, and then we get the kill off of the poison, and we just evade that status. Yeah, the evasion there. That fight, if we couldn't have evaded those statuses, would have been a problem. Okay, so this is mana, and this is debuff removal. Both those things are good. Um, always with the thinking and the choices. I think we get additional frost rune. I'm 
still transforming one of these, the, the tough stack is going to be very valuable to us here. Because um, without it, we would have taken quite a bit of damage. Uh, everything here is not very useful to upgrade. So we've frozen one of them. Uh, we're going to take some damage here, but it's not a ton. I'm fine with not um, with not using our frozen yet. I'm hoping to get this kill. Not quite. point do I just heal and yeah and do I apply a freeze I think not I think if I'm taking 10 and whatever debuff because that's all up here he stacks then we yeah okay so we're just weak that's that's fine it's not fine okay uh can we freeze I I don't know how much frost is on normally when you mouse over with like a frost card you can see how much frost is on a thing but because these are not like frost apply frost isn't a built-in part we can't actually see that so playing this ruinous gamble would draw us five of these six um i would double it again just because i need the um the extra doom stacks i think i'm actually going to do that um because i just really want to draw in the mana otherwise this turn doesn't do much okay yeah because that's what i was afraid of was that if i didn't have uh that i wasn't going to do that first i think i do this to get the healing even though i don't actually care about the rest of it and then i can go ahead and transform that for later which will at least give me some tough stacks um So we're on a timer. We have to get this kill either. We either have to get this kill or we have to draw Ruinous Gamble before and play Ruinous Gamble after we draw it. Uh, before enough turns have passed that we just get bodied by. Uh, let's go ahead and use this because otherwise I'll forget. And most of our other things we care about have been upgraded. So we're really hoping to find. Okay, so we have one more turn to draw the Ruinous Gamble. And I have to go and get this kill here, because if I don't, then... Uh, come on, Ruinous Gamble. That was brutal. And I had to shuffle the deck because like, we just have to keep putting out damage. Um, and if we're not going to be able to, to play the Rose Gamble anyway, we gambled and lost. I'm a little disappointed by that. Um, like, I don't think... I made an unreasonable choice in playing the Ruinous Gamble. Um, I think I may have made a, 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 bad, a bad choice in taking the Ruinous Gamble, though. So I was taking another mana card. Do I? Ru I may as well use a rest. Like we're gonna need. Um, use another, oh yeah, the hobble's gonna go. Um, we're gonna get. Uh, we, we still have a ton of rest that we can burn through before the uh, Bay later fight, and so I'm fine with using one here. Let's, uh, we need 12 to freeze an elite. Yeah, that's gonna do it. And then, so basically, I'm just gonna use a regular freeze here. So, cause the decision here, there was like, if I don't, why am I, why am I done? Um, if I don't double the, um, the freeze, if I do double the freeze, I'm committing myself basically to not 
ever ruin to definitely not ruin his gambling. And um, I think we firmly established I am going to ruinously gamble, even though it will be truly ruinous. Do that. Uh, let's actually just go ahead and get this freeze there, and then finish off that kill. I maybe should have wailed on the backliner. Um, yeah, that's that's good enough. I'm fine with taking those. Uh, do I want to turn the malignant Nova into something? So the re oh no, because I can't play that now because I've already committed to the spy glass. Okay, so mana, into mana, into toxic splinters, into draw toxin, into transform a blood burst, into ravenous intent, transform the other blood burst. which is nice and then we can do that still got plenty of turns it'll be fine I think that uh, the, the attack there is based on how many um, debuffs we have. Um, and since we don't have any debuffs, we don't take anything. Do that. And this time I think we're going to win this gamble because uh, even if we don't draw because yeah, we drew the Runa's Gamble and we had enough damage, so just worked out. So Arcane Visions or Morbid End. Am I just going to remove whichever one of these I take? Probably. I, I don't think I can afford the Morbid End. I don't think I can afford the Arcane Visions either. Um, I think we take this. I think we use it to replace actually the hammer just because it feels like the bulk of our cards that we care about upgrading we have upgraded at this point and i am cutting the arcane visions uh, because when you are ruinously gambling uh, it's important to minimize the number of extra cards in your deck i think the mana lance qualifies yeah, my lines can go. Because we don't have any ways to really crank up its damage. What else am I fine with removing? I think the blood strike may be next. It's either the blood strike or maybe a life tap. Because we do have a lot of life taps. But we do need a lot of mana. Um, yeah, and also like the blood strike is kind of our worst strike as far as rallying strike is concerned. Um, I mean, if we do have the mana to play whatever we get off of it, though, hmm. it might be a focus because getting to, to exactly zero has been a problem occasionally. Actually, yeah, no, it'll be fine. We only have one more fight. Okay. So because after we did some testing, we determined that the ability to get additional maximum mana is based on the conditional number of mana cards you need is based on how many, um, what percentage of your deck is mana cards. So by removing, you have to have 40% of your deck be mana cards in order for this option to appear. And because that last removal pushed me to 24 cards, which reduced the number total number I needed, I just barely now over the threshold, which is nice.
So, all right. I forget this thing. I, I, I always forget this thing starts with purity. That's, that's annoying. Because we're going to lose this first... Uh, This first freeze proc, at least, to that purity stack. Um, so, that's going to take out one stack, at least. Let's see if we can get. That's going to eat the others, and now we can freeze it. Um, so, now we're in a lot better position, because now we can go actually get this freeze, get this heal. Uh, I still think I want to duplicate the Ruinous Gamble. Oh, I didn't say that out loud, but the Duplication Tome, I'm also planning to duplicate the, to use that on the Ruinous Gamble. actually fine transforming the frost strike because we have ice shards do I still have two strikes in the deck if not I don't want to play the rallying strike plus because I do not want to shuffle again actually wait Ruiz Gamble's in my band I do want to shuffle So we've applied a lot of frost. We have whoop. Frost coming out on mana cards. We have a bunch of um, frost rune. We are at full health. Life's good. The Malignant Nova actually ended up doing a whole lot of work for us just because it applied multiple status effects, which is how we were able to deal with um, that problem. Let's just duplicate those. Um, because I actually think just getting out a bunch of uh, blood bursts is going to be what's going to win us this game. So I think we can just win right here off of. Yeah. Close. I mean, functionally, yes, that won us just because then we get. Yeah, that worked out. Um, so yeah, that was a quick play run. So definitely one of the things that I think that showed off there is that with quick play, our ability to remove a lot of cards combined with our ability to upgrade a lot of cards meant that although our core engine was kind of sketchy in a lot of ways, um, we were still able to, because like we were relying on Slash Plus as one of our main damage outlets uh, at, at several points. But we were still able to pull it all together, largely just off the back of all of those removals, all of those upgrades. Uh, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine upgraded cards in our final deck. That still feels, sure, that, that feels low. Because we get at least two, four, six, eight, ten upgrades. Uh, maybe I can't count. I probably can't count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That doesn't feel like enough upgrades. I must have cut upgraded cards at some point, maybe. Anyway. Or I'm just overthinking how many upgrades we should have. Regardless, the point is that was the run. Um, Victory was had, a good time was had by all, uh, I'm pooped. And so yeah, this was the last character. I will probably do my next videos uh, after this will be me just talking over various cards, whether I like them or dislike them and why. Uh, so uh, I'm. if that sounds interesting to you, then uh, look forward to those. If that doesn't sound interesting to you, I'm still probably making them. 
you can just choose not to look forward to them. Bye.